Tea. Well, from that to another explosive story, and if you recall last night, we reported how exorbitant sums of your money was used to pay for goods and services for the Standard Gauge Railway project. We named the seven Kenyans who signed what is possibly Kenya's most expensive contract to date that would bind the country to debt for decades. Tonight, we look into who was spinning the wheels from behind the scenes and who might have stood to gain from the contract. On the 26th day of June 2012, China Road and Bridge Company wrote to the then managing director of the Kenya Rollers Corporation, Nduva Muli, noting that the projected cost of $220,991,502,221 shillings would be payable in U.S. dollars. This funding would be via a loan from the Chinese government to Kenya. The CRBC manager apparently assured Kenya Railways management that the company had taken steps to ensure that no person acting for or on behalf of the company had or would engage in improper practices. Any loan agreements between China and Kenya are in line with common international best practice. This was a month before the then MD Kenya Railways Nduva Muli signed the award of the project to the Chinese company. It would become Kenya's most ambitious and expensive transport project that began as a dream to connect East Africa. A year later, in 2013, Muli was appointed as a principal secretary in the transport ministry, but was in 2015 interrogated by the Anti-Corruption Commission over allegations of irregularly disposing Kenya Railways assets. However, six years earlier before Muli signed any papers, the NAC government was contemplating an ambitious plan to upgrade the meter gauge railway, the Lunatic Express, that was built by the colonial government in 1891. By the end of 2006, Solomon Nouna, a railways engineer, was recalled from retirement to spearhead a feasibility study and possibly lead the railway project. At the time, Rift Valley Railways had proposed a two-and-a-half-year operation of railway transport between Kenya and Uganda, but failed to attain the 2.4 billion shilling equity needed to seal the deal. Three years after this deal fell through in 2009, Chirau Ali Makwere, the transport minister at the time, signed an MOU that would enable engineer owner and his seven-member team conduct a feasibility study together with the Chinese company. Part of the plan was to have an electric train snaking its way from the port of Mombasa to Nairobi and into Uganda, Rwanda, Congo, and possibly connect with Tanzania and South Sudan. The Chinese company maneuvered its way to dominate the entire project by ensuring they would be the sole agent to design, engineer, and procure the contract. In the environment and socio-economic study done on the viability of a new railway line, the Kenya Economic Survey of 2011 said the revenue earned from the cargo transportation in the railway subsector decreased from 4.3 billion in 2009 to 4.1 billion shillings in 2010. Thus, there was a need to restructure and improve infrastructure to increase revenue. A year before Transport Minister Mokwere's MOU was signed, businessman Jimmy Wanjigi had approached President Mwai Kibaki to ensure that the project that was struggling with funding would continue. He is reported to have sought an audience with the then Prime Minister Raila Odinga in the coalition government and was able to get it back on track, albeit for a while, before things went cold again. Current regime of Huru Kenyatta, this is a home they know. In fact, their government was formed in this home. At the onset of construction of the SGR, the government of Kenya maintained that it was footing only 15% of the total cost, with China providing the bulk of the financing. But with the tens of billions of shillings due for repayment from this year going forward, the chickens have come home to roost. That Tanzania is constructing its own SGR traversing the country from the port of Dar es Salaam to the western part of the country with the intention of linking up Uganda, Rwanda and the Democratic Republic of Congo is cause for alarm for Kenya. Since this would significantly dent the cargo business at the port of Mombasa. The cargo business is the holy grail of the entire SGR project, such that failure to secure sufficient rolling stock would make the project unviable. Ile tulikuwa tumekubaliana na wale ambao 
ni wa China ambao walitupatia hii mkopo tulikuwa tuwe tunasafirisha six trains tumefika kiwango ya 2020 where we are moving approximately 11 to 12 trains every day the sgr is also currently under the spotlight for exaggerated procurement prices with the state also being accused of allowing the crbc firm to bring in more than the agreed number of chinese nationals to work on laying of the trucks a task that ideally should have gone to kenyan citizens the kenyan taxpayer is footing that bill lila mohamed